Hi, this is Mike Dwyer. I'm here at the St. Pete Clearwater International Airport, um, so it gets a little loud sometimes. But uh, this is my quick EQ200 I built in about 1984, 1985 area. Um, I currently have 1,400 or so hours on it, so it's flown quite a bit. Uh, it's getting to be a pretty old airplane, but it's very modern. It's got uh, all uh, flat panel displays and modern electronics in it, so it's a state-of-the-art airplane right now. Um, but uh, back when I built the airplane, um, the commercial airline prices were starting to get pretty high, and uh, I figured uh, I could build an airplane and fly myself. There was a lot of uh, a lot of activity, a lot of excitement in the home-built um, airport airplane area back then, and uh, so I'd gone through a bunch of different airplane designs, and finally I settled on uh, on this airplane. Uh, wife and I flew out to Mojave Airport. I think we were on a business trip, but we stopped in at the uh, Mojave Airport anyway, just to check out uh, Gene Sheehan and the factory Q200 that was there. Um, I crawled around under it, uh, all over it, measured everything I could measure that wasn't uh, wasn't marked in the plans, and uh, checked it all out. And from there, made our decision to uh, go with the Q200. Um, it looks pretty small, but it's 44 inches between the shoulders, so it's uh, pretty darn comfortable inside. I think it's a very comfortable airplane to fly in. Um, but back in uh, about 84, um, we uh, I bought it from uh, Clio Crop Care up in North Carolina and uh, had it shipped down here with a, uh, a standard shipper. So I had to go to the shipping company to pick it up. Um, and I had a Mustang II at the time, um, pretty ordinary little Mustang. And I remember I had a luggage, a roof rack kind of deal on top of the car. And uh, <clears throat> so I s slid this uh, probably 12 foot long box, four feet in one direction, maybe three feet the other direction, on top of my Mustang II, and I drove it home. So uh, that was the start of our, uh, our airplane building project. Um, I built it in my garage in my house I was living on on Tanglewood Drive in uh, Northeast St. Pete. Um, also, I went down to the EAA chapter. I joined them for a while. I was a member there. And uh, when I finally uh, picked the kit out and stuff, I uh, proudly announced to the whole crowd there that uh, I'm, they, they knew I was a Cessna 150 pilot and had about 40 hours on a Cessna 150. Um, but uh, I announced to the crowd there that I was going to uh, build a quick EQ 200, and I was going to do it in a year and a half. And uh, the place just burst out in laughing because um, the average home builder probably takes about 10 years to build an airplane. Um, but I'm not the average. I, I had money in this airplane. It wasn't an airplane. It was going to fly. So uh, I had a job. I was an electrical engineer. I was working at Sperry um, Gyroscope Company. And uh, so I spent a lot of my day uh, planning out what I was going to do that evening when I got home to the airplane. So I'd get home and I'd uh, turn on the TV and there was nothing to watch like there is today. It's hard, it's all junk on TV. So I'd uh, walk out into my garage and I'd start uh, start my projects. And I kind of had it set up like a factory line. So I had all the elevators and the, the ailerons all laying out on the table so you could do a layup on one side of them. And then the next day, after they're cured, you'd flip it over and do the layup on the next side of them. So I had it kind of set up like a factory uh, um, factory uh, build. So that's part of the reason why I got it done so quickly. Um, also, I was kind of determined. Um, I don't tend to give up on stuff. I finish it. So I'm not the type that uh, messes around and just uh, plays with things. I want to get it done. The other reason I got it done so fast is I didn't make any changes from the plans. I used to joke with them back then that my plane was closer to the factory plans than the factory plane was. And uh, I truly believe that was the case. Because the factory plane had been modified several times and changed from a Revmaster engine to the Continental engine, a uh, different wing in the front. So uh, I really believe that my plane was closer to the plans than the factory airplane was. Uh, but anyway, a year and a half later, I rolled the thing out. Here's a picture of it sitting on the uh, front lawn of my house after I put it together. I couldn't get the whole plane together um, 
inside the garage. I could have either the engine on and the body, but I couldn't have the tail cone on. Or I could have the tail cone on, but not the engine. Um, so this picture here is the first time it actually um, was a whole airplane in one piece. Um, so uh, I'd also like to say that the only way I could build it in a year and a half was having uh, the support of my EAA buddies. Uh, back then it was a huge com camaraderie. Um, people were very helpful. Um, I had never even seen an aircraft rivet before and had no idea what to do with the silly things. Um, I had no idea how to safety wire properly, so they taught me how to do that. Um, all, all along the build, they would uh, check on the progress and see that I'm doing things right and stuff. So the EAA group was a uh, huge, um, huge part of a successful build here. Uh, one of the guys down there, George Reed, um, I'd known him for many years already, and uh, he... Uh, he successfully flew many new home builds. Um, he built so many airplanes. He built a biplane breezy. Um, he built uh, lots of different stuff. He, uh, he, he was the one that went and checked me out in tail draggers. So uh, what I had been doing before I was ready to fly this plane, I uh, rented a Cessna 150 and I would come swooping in on final at 100 miles an hour, which is basically as fast as the plane would go. And I would flare out over the numbers. That gave me a really good sight picture for uh, um, for flying the airplane. So uh, George uh, was also a very renowned tail dragger pilot. So uh, there was other tail draggers at the field, uh, Porter Field, that went about 100 miles an hour. Well, maybe that's a stretch, 85. <laughs> so I got checked out, and uh, Harry Fletcher checked me out in a uh, a Chief, an Aranka Chief, and. George checked me out in a quarter field, and I think I flew some other tail dragger back then too. But uh, so I was doing pretty good in tail draggers. The only thing I did wrong one time was uh, we were coming in to land at Albert Wooded on runway six, and uh, I think it was six. But anyway, I squeak, squeak, touched down, and then immediately made this 45 degree turn off to the taxiway and down the taxiway. And George looks back and he goes, did you plan to turn off at such a high speed under the taxiway? I'm like, well, no. <laughs> but uh, luckily there was nobody on the taxiway, and uh, but uh, that was pretty weird. That was uh, uh, a little bit of tail dragging uh, issues. But uh, so we first finished the airplane. We uh, dragged it up to Brooksville Airport, which is north of here. They got a 7,000 foot long runway, 150 or 200 foot wide. So it's a really good runway for doing this. And I had asked George to test fly the airplane because as a 60 or so hour pilot, I just wasn't, uh, um, I shouldn't be flying on a brand new fast home built like this. So George agreed to it. In fact, he was uh, ecstatic about doing it. He's a little bit crazy like that. And uh, so from Brooksville, he fired it up and uh, took off on runway nine and uh, it just jumped off the ground and started heading skyward like a homesick angel, they would say. Um, so I had a radio and I was talking to George and we were monitoring uh, oil pressures and temperatures and um, I think George had it up that day to like 180 miles an hour. And uh, so he came around to uh, do his first landing and uh, he comes down and he's probably 120 miles an hour area. Um, and uh, he just floats and floats and floats the whole length of the runway. Um, you got to get this plane single place down to about 85 miles an hour before you got a chance of landing. Um, and even, that's even with a 7,000 foot strip. But uh, so that landing was unsuccessful. So the next time he came in a little slower, probably 100 miles an hour. And uh, same thing, he floated all the way to the end, had to do a go around, come, go back around again. But this next time, he finally got the speed down low enough that uh, he was able to touch down and land and stop on that 7,000 foot uh, runway. Uh, the plane rolled straight as an arrow, um, no glitching around. As far as tail draggers go, um, this one's one of the less twitchy ones, actually. It's pretty darn stable. Um, today, they've got this thing called a gall wheel alignment, where you make sure that your wheels are um, 
towed out. Yeah, you tow them out a little bit for tail draggers. And they want to be pretty close to straight up and down. Um, so when, when you got the wheels out of alignment, um, you've got a much more difficult airplane to keep rolling straight down the center line. But when the wheels are aligned properly, it's a very, very straight rolling airplane. And you can see that in some of my takeoff and landing videos. It's very, very straight. Um, but anyway, George uh, flew it. We uh, adjusted some things to get the oil temperature down better. Um, so uh, after that, we were we got the plane so it was not overheating and, and flying quite well. And then George and I both jumped in the airplane. George was in the pilot seat. Um, with my airplane, I only have rudder pedals on the left side. So George had the rudder pedals. Um, I'm on the right side. I don't have rudder pedals. And uh, so we, uh, we both took off and flew around. It probably had about five to seven hours on it at that time. So it's basically uh, not something you should do, but, you know. <laughs> uh, the, whole thing, the whole thing about building an experimental airplane is based with controlled risk. So... Uh, I got to do the first landing with George. Um, actually, George landed the airplane. And uh, there's no real point in me doing the stick with my left hand and landing it. So I did not do that. Um, but uh, the next flight, I jumped in the airplane. I uh, realized I have a lot of, quite a, well, I don't know, a couple of hours. No, it wasn't even that much, an hour or two of taxi time. So I was pretty familiar with how the airplane reacted on the ground, and the, the rudder inputs. Or which are with your feet. And uh, so after the flying with George, I knew the picture, the sight picture that I was looking for with the airplane. And uh, so I flew around. I knew the speeds basically to come in at. So uh, I remember taking off and climbing out like crazy and being up in the air. And I think I flew around a little while before I um, came back to the airport to land. And I remember thinking that. Uh, Man, this thing flies pretty good, but uh, I'm gonna have to land this thing. So, <laughs> so uh, came around and uh, you know came in and, and made an absolute squeaker landing, rolled straight as an arrow, uh, got it back to the FBO and tied it down, and um, so I was successful. I did my first landing in the quickie, and. Uh, Shortly after that, you know, we're, we're based in the St. Petersburg area, so we really didn't want to fly out of Brooksville. It was an hour and a half drive up there from where we live. So we moved the airplane down to Albert Witted. And uh, the fun part about that airport is it had a 2,800-foot-long uh, um, runway. So as far as this airplane goes, that's an aircraft carrier. Oh, yeah, the runway's right over Tampa Bay, too, so it kind of looked like you're approaching an aircraft carrier. Um, so my first uh, oh, few months at Albert Witted, um, I did so many go-arounds. I mean, I would do, if I, if I didn't have my speed right or if I was not flaring out like over the numbers, I'd do a go-around. So uh, I don't know how many go-arounds I did, but it was lots and lots of them until I really learned how to fly this airplane and, and land uh, short, in a short distance. Uh, probably my best distance is, and my normal distance, is about 1,600 feet to land it. Um, getting off the ground takes about 11 seconds and uh, 700 feet. So I really got no issue of getting off grass fields or paved fields. Um, it's a very powerful airplane. It just zooms off. But landing, that's where it gets interesting. Um, five more miles an hour. Like if I don't approach at 85 miles an hour over the numbers, if I approach at 90, That'll use up another 1,000 or 2,000 feet. So uh, your approach speed is just super critical. So uh, basically, the whole test prep program, 40 hours, went really well. Um, had a few things to tweak, mostly with oil temperatures. Uh, put an oil cooler on it, I think, during that time, uh, just to keep the oil temperatures down. Because we're flying in like 85, 90 degrees Florida temperature. Um, but uh, successful. So basically we had uh, a pretty successful airplane and uh, the full 40 hours of flying uh, didn't break it, didn't even mess it up too bad. Um, so that's the, that's the story of the, the birth of the Q200.